Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's a new day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You like the remix, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, we are here live for another episode of Tupac Skilly in the Block. Boom, boom, Trim Gang, Exposed the North. In the building, you know what it is. We just chilling. We got a lot happening in the coming weeks. I mean, uh, I myself, I mean, Keely just finished recording. I mean, I had the honor of recording Keely's first track in six years. Six years. Six years as of June twenty fifth. Okay, so twenty yeah. seventh, that is. Okay, okay, that's that's a serious time, and you know what I mean. Like, and the track was dope. You don't even, <laughs> you don't even know, bro. Like, I heard the back go off. I was just like, wait a minute, you're just gonna act all cool like you didn't just do that. And shit? <laughs> like, I didn't just, like, we weren't just talking in prose, and all of a sudden you go speak in poetry like that. It's not good, bro. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. That's what I said. Oh shit. Yeah, yep, yep. So, yeah, you can probably barely hear me for the first little bit, but, you know, (laughs) it's all good. Yeah. The other mic was down. The other mic was down. No, no, yours is good. Oh, nah, I think they both run through the first one and the second one, but, you know, I'll unmute that just to make sure you get both channels. You get that clear, (laughs) quality crystal. Crystal. A crystal. A crystal. <laughs> They're like, we're not on crystal anymore. We're on Ciroc. That's yeah, okay. Are we to talk about you know what I mean? I, I think it's a big taboo. Yeah. It's a taboo. Don't worry. Eventually, like, we're, we're, we're talking about changing the the format of this podcast as well. And like, we might be going on a live podcasting stream, video live, so we can yeah. stream to multiple sites simultaneously because you just need this knowledge about the sports entertainment. And to see our goddamn gleam see if you were watching you'd see me smiling and that smile would make you smile <laughs> you see it's infectious so we have more we have stuff to talk about where it comes to all things AEW to WWE and because we're starting with the bigger brand let's talk about WWE let's do it right let's now let's talk about WWE goddamn E Oh man, Tilly sounds a little frustrated today. I'm a little salty. <laughs> if you hadn't gathered, you know. I'm a salty. Like, you would be too if you stayed up till two in the morning watching that garbage I watched last night. Yeah, bro, it interrupted the middle of my day, fam. That's like, fair. I don't think you, like, I could have been doing all this stuff, and I was just like, let me try this, and then just, <laughs> it's just like, is this really what I'm, I'm seeing? Like every, every, like Graves was complaining about the weather the whole time. It's yeah, like, he literally said he lost like sixty pounds. <laughs> he was joking. You about know what I mean? On commentary during the show. Yep. Oh, oh my goodness. That's not even like. And he, he was loopy as fuck by the end of it. It was hilarious. Hmm. Yep. 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 It was funny. Raw happened on June the third. I have to confirm. <laughs> well, I have yet another set of um, endeavors to partake in. So if we go too fast for y'all, you can always you can always listen to it later. That's what it is. Yeah. All right. So Shane McMahon makes ominous promise for WWE Super Showdown. University of Texas, the six-man tag team match pitting Roman Reigns and the Usos against Drew McIntyre and the revival was never going to end this respected rivalries. Well, everyone is too deep in the issue to end anything on short of decimation, but Raw's wild card, Raw's, Raw's wild clash kicked things into a new gear all the same, thanks in no small part to the involvement of Shane McMahon. The best in the world <laughs> made his presence known before the match even began, antagonizing Reigns from atop the ramp with a bold promise to hand the big dog his first ever submission loss at W... Uh, Friday at WWE Super Showdown. McMahon got involved in the match, too, diverting Reigns' attention and setting him up for a bulldozing Claymore from Drew McIntyre, who finished off the match moments later with a Claymore to one of the Usos. The revival ran interference on the outside. Shane didn't let Shane didn't let the end of the match stop him, either, recruiting McIntyre and the revival for a series of post-match indignities against the Big Dog, culminating in his own validation of the former Universal's champion, Spear. It was Shane's most definitive statement in his rivalry to date. 
Whether he can make good on his momentum without three bullies at his side, however, is another matter entirely. Well, it turns out that didn't matter. Nope. That's, none of that mattered. No, nope, no. Nope. Because here's the thing. They set up perfect storytelling on Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Monday, they set up Shane McMahon is going to hand Roman Reigns his first submission loss. There was very little submission attempts during that match. Mm-hmm. And it ended in a Claymore behind the ref's back. I mean, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but let's just be honest. What happened was they negated the own, the, the story that they set up not even a whole week prior. Yeah, and you'd think after the Claymore, he put him in a submission hold and then, you know. Just have him be knocked out, the ref lifts his arm, drops it, and he loses his submission. Exactly. Done but deal. We're not the writers, we just know what to write. Yeah. Okay, you want to take the second one? Yeah, sure. The Lucha House Party brawled with Lars Sullivan. I may have a different opinion. Yeah, man. It's just... Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, because you go to... Okay, I see what it is now. Um, We're just comparing our raw news. You see, if you go to WWE.com or the WWE app, you'll see two different streams. Word, so Word for word, the same exact stories written, but just given different headlines on different platforms. It's, yeah, it's strange. You think it's, they use the same... strange marketing technique, I guess. I guess. Weeks ago, throwing the Lucha House Party in the ring with Lars Sullivan would have meant just more bodies for the freak to stack. Incredibly, however, Kalisto, Lince Dorado, and Grand Metalik seem to have cracked the code of how to use their numbers against the typically unstoppable, bi- unstoppable big man, leading to a retali- retaliatory attempt by Sullivan just four days before he faces the trio in a handicap match. The freak once again walked away disappointed, despite a strong opening against the self-styled Lucha Avengers. Mm. He found his efforts snapped well, by rapid-fire attacks from the trio oh. and a triple dropkick that sent him tumbling through the ropes. This is simply a preamble to Friday's scramble, but after the last two confrontations, this under-the-radar rivalry has become a matter of pride very fast. Yeah, Mexican pride, which is something that uh, uh, Lars is not a fan of. Um, Damn. This under the, Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, vindication awaits, either for the scrappy underdogs who are on the cusp of uh, slaying the giant, or the vengeful big man who uh, let them have <coughs> it for far too long. Mm. And we'll get to why that other, why the, their match was garbage as well. Momentarily, Becky Lynch tips the scales as Lacey Evans battles Charlotte Flair. If any contentment is the en- if contentment is the enemy of competition. Consider Becky two balls better off gone. As Becky Lynch explained, reaching the mountaintop had the unintended side effect of plateauing the double champ, which helped her contribute to losing the SmackDown Women's title at Money in the WWE Money in the Bank. Things were looking up for the man on Raw, however, as her two rivals, Lacey Evans and Charlotte Flair, are now fighting each other. <laughs> and because Lynch seems to have rediscovered a little bit of that old straight fire we all fell in love with. Lynch didn't interfere with the mounting tensions between the lady and the queen. Instead, sitting back while the hostilities built to the point of impromptu match between Evans and Flair, she made a show of her non-interference during the match too, until the queen had sufficiently tenderized her foe, and then Becky made her move, hauling Charlotte out of the ring, cued the disqualification win, and pummeling Evans with the manhandle slam. Consider the payback delivered, or at least begun. The Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch leaves Raw in the exact position she had, in the exact opposite way she had arrived. Happy for sure, but nowhere near content. And now you see, notice how we were talking about naming Andrade's finishing move and Becky's move got named all of a sudden. Yeah, it's still influence. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you make any change that is anywhere close to what we suggest. I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Credit for that. <laughs> oh man! All right. All right, next up, we'll alternate. Sure. Uh, Rey Mysterio relinquished the United States Championship to Samoa Joe. Uh, the short, tragic saga of Rey Mysterio as United States Champion came to an end, for now at least, as the ultimate underdog, hamstrung by a shoulder injury, came to Raw and did what he needed, what needed doing by relinquishing the title to Samoa Joe. Given that Joe's soldiers were never down for the pinfall that cost him the title, that development amounts to just to serve for the once and now current champion. Ray, meanwhile, is forced to grit his teeth and do the right thing as he always has, thanks in no small part to an obstacle he couldn't quite overcome. 
nonetheless, the facts are these. Joe is champion, Joe is happy, and given that he savaged Mysterio with a coquina clutch anyways, once he got the title back, it's back to business as usual. What a savage. Savage. Joe's a beast. Love Joe. How can you not love Joe? Oh, man, what a savage. What a savage. Joe versus Dominic. Hey. It's happening. We're setting it up. It's happening. I'm not. I'm not denying it. Like you are the originator of WWE math. So. <laughs> and I'm not the originator. Of you it. Not? Oh, no. I've never heard it before. You. <laughs> no, no. So I give you guy credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the WWE is the originator of the WWE yeah, math. Yeah. But like you know, you're the original. Like, like I, you coined the phrase, from what I've heard. I think uh, I, I. I do think I. I can't. I can't take credit for it. I think one of the podcasts. Potentially, it might have been uh, Stephen Larson. Okay. Uh, from Going and Raw podcast, shout out to Stephen Larson Going and Raw. They're pretty goddamn dope as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's hey, it is what it is. That is exactly what it is. It is WWE now. You're right. You're so, right. And it's uh, it's fairly fairly consistent. Okay. Uh, Strowman and Lashley test their strength or uh, test their might in an arm wrestling match. <laughs> Weird. The arm wrestling contest has its own strange. Oddly hollowed place in the annals of sports entertainment, as has a matter of pure bragging rights. So before Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley beat each other all over WWE Super Showdown, it was only fitting they faced off in one uh, in one of the most rudimentary yet rewarding tests of strength. Unfortunately for Strowman, he seems to have forgotten that the rivalry doesn't always come down with who's strongest. Come down to who's the strongest. I'll get there, people. I'll get there. <laughs> Despite some mind games and taunts that riled up Strowman at the outset, Lashley found his mighty, almighty muscles were no match for the power of these hands, as Strowman planted him after a couple of false starts. Strowman refused to let up either, but the chest beating came with consequences. Lashley threw a bag of chalk to the monster among men's face, rendering Strowman blind and defenseless against a running power slam of the almighty zone. Given the loss, you can consider Lashley humbled. Even given what happened after, you could also consider him motivated. Both would be true. Yep, and that, that was Bobby Lashley getting to go over by doing the fight afterwards and beating him up because the WWE math stood true there as well. Um, mm. Nikki Cross, my girl. God, I love Nikki Cross. Uh, Nikki Cross defeated WWE Women's Tag Team Champion, my other girl, Peyton Royce. From the Iconics. Iconic. Uh, Nikki Cross has been tearing it up alongside Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch the last couple of weeks as the man's tag team partner, but Alexa Bliss reinserted herself into the Twisted Sisters' orbit on Raw, backing her up against Peyton Royce and inadvertently giving her an opening to defeat the Iconic, though Cross didn't seem to notice. The inciting incident was Bliss uh, sipping on a personalized coffee mug at ringside which led Royce and Billy Kay to take their attention off Cross. Royce booted the cup out of the goddess's hand before the iconic sent Bliss tumbling into the puddle. White jeans and all. Cross took advantage of the chaos to pin Royce with her twisting neck break, neck breaker, but an infuriated Bliss got the last word, pouncing on Billy Kay in a moment of frenzy that made her new friend quite proud. Mm-hmm. So, if this was the attitude there, Alexa in white jeans being pushed into coffee would have been the least of what would have happened. More than likely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would have been like... My lord, that would have been ridiculous. They would have went so over the top. Vince Russo would have had it all of a sudden. There'd be a, a, a kiddie pool full of mud. And both of them fighting in it yeah. somehow. And then Miss Kitty would win the Women's Championship somehow. Because she, she was... Uh, Jerry the King's wifey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Speaking of the kid, yeah, he was at the last pay per view, not Super Showdown, but the one before that, wasn't he? On the yeah, on the show, yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's always at Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. He gets to commentate during the Rumble every year. That's pretty cool. Mm, nice. Well, not quite Royal Rumble, but definitely a beast in the bank. Brock Lesnar's one word reply to cashing in on Seth Rollins. Rollins was feeling pretty good when he walked into Raw, seemingly against all logic as he was still facing the looming threat of Brock Lesnar, a Brock Lesnar cash-in. The Beast made him regret that bravado by putting on quite a show of delaying the inevitable. 
The crucial, most crucially during the confrontation with Baron Corbin, the man Rollins will unquestionably have to defend his Universal title against Friday at WWE Super Showdown. The Conqueror made final fake out landed Rollins square in the path of the end of days for the Lone Wolf, at which point Mr. Money in the Bank finally made his promised appearance. He did not, however, make good on his promise to cash in the contract, despite hysterical pleas from Paul Heyman to do so. Instead, Lesnar savaged Rollins with a pair of suplexes and F5 on the outside, a series of raining blows from a steel chair. Heyman once again begged his client to cash in, though Lesnar refuted him with a single word, Friday. Given that Rollins was taken out of the arena on stretcher and as a result of the attack, it's safe to say that as good of a time as any. That it's as good of a time as any. And anyone who tries to force Lesnar to make a move before he's ready does so at their own risk. Yo, he savagely ravaged the man, though. That chair, those chair shots were ungodly. Like, he was, he was smashing mm. his back. Merciless. Whee! Merciless. That's so, so nuts. And I mean, yeah, it's, it was all building to, well, we don't know what it was building to because we'll talk about that later. Huh. Uh, but uh, Bray Wyatt presented a very special episode of the Firefly Funhouse this week. Mm-hmm. Didn't he, Block? Oh my gosh, yes, he the did. Mu- the Muscle Man Dance. The Muscle Man Dance. Everybody, pull up your do pants. Do the Muscle Man Dance. And do the Muscle Man Dance. Shake your behind. Raise your mind. Do the Muscle Man Dance. <laughs> so creepy, so fucked up. Yeah. That Vince doll was crazy with the horns. The horns on it. Unbelievable. What are you doing? I love it. I love it. It's so weird. So let's uh, let's talk about that. Welcome to a very special episode of the Firefly Funhouse, where Bray Wyatt extolled the virtues of exercise with a brand new friend, Huskus the Pig Boy. As Bray told the gluttonous porker, indulging his appetites won't get him anywhere in the world, and if he gets his act together, one day he'll be called a genius with the whole world in his hands. All he has to do is something called the Muscle Man Dance, a funky boogie that turned the pig into a gym rat. Uh, much to the dismay of Abby the Witch, and much to the delight of the horned, besuited devil who appeared in his doorway. They, I like that they don't mention that that besuited devil is Vince. Vince. You know what I mean? Like, clearly. So genius. I heard an interesting rumor, or theory, sorry, on the Firefly Funhouse, which is that maybe the Firefly Funhouse is all taking place in Bray's could be. I kind of like that. that I kind of like that it. That would definitely be. That would definitely be an interesting spin on the plot. Yeah, with the fiend, and that's why all the that's why all the characters are based off elements of of Bray Wyatt's past personas and mm-hmm. personalities. Like Abby the Witch is clearly Sister Abigail. Ah. Uh, uh, the Vulture. Waylon is Waylon Mercy, the guy who. Oh, okay. A, uh, a Hawaiian shirt and stuff like that. Huskus the pig boy. Clearly, he's making fun of the fact that he was, uh, you know, quite a chunky lad and he used to be Husky Harris in oh. the original NXT or Nexus when that came up. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I mean, they're all everything is something to do with his old personality, which would make sense of like these are all things that are happening in his in his brain. <laughs> mm. Okay. It's a good way to look at it. Twisted. That makes it even more twisted, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, when you wake up as early as I do, that's what you sound like by this time of day. <laughs> but I still got more coming at you. We got, like, I got, I'm performing tomorrow at the Taps Brew House. I didn't even really promote that too much on line and everything yeah, yeah did. i didn't that's my humility i'm gonna be on the radio all morning so uh, so for a good part of the afternoon so i'll be calling people down there going with Viz, right? yeah going yeah going on the Viz show yep. oh man so yeah that's gonna be interesting uh yeah. catch me at 4680 q.ca yeah, yeah and um shout out to the Viz. shout out to you know rick rose shout out to t-o-double-d todd page 
when we get back into this now. Orton riles up Triple H in face-to-face confrontation. As far as Triple H is concerned, his match with Randy Orton this Friday at WWE Super Showdown didn't need to be anything more than a battle between two multi-time world champions with nothing to prove and no bad blood to speak of, even after all they'd done to each other. The game felt there was nothing either of them could say that could truly rile one another up. That was said, or that, with that said, the COO felt the need to remind Orton that he wasn't just an empty suit and that he'd outlasted everyone who'd made the mistake of underestimating him. Orton was unwilling to keep things ceremonial, though, tossing out a single insult that was enough to get the King of Kings in his face and perhaps make his per- make things personal for this Friday, just the way both of them like it. Yeah, that was a good promo. Uh, what the, the line they're talking about was uh, Randy asked Hunter uh, to do him a favor, and before he went to Jeddah on Friday to uh, ask Stephanie to retrieve if, he could retrieve if she could retrieve his balls from her bag. Yep. And uh, Hunter said, I mean, they're just so big. It's just, you know, it's daunting to carry them around all the time. They're just so huge. It's like, but you wouldn't know anything about that because you've never had any. Great, great little promo. Yep. Got everything you needed to be done, done in, you know, a few words. Didn't need any writers there. It's perfect. Love it. Yep. Okay, that's you. Ricochet defeated Cesaro. One and only. (laughs) Oh, man. I'm telling you, there's something about that entrance that just is like, why am I amping up right now? I'm just just trying to have this cup of tea. The only thing I wish they would do is I wish they would take out the sound effect that Vince uh, demanded be added, which was the ricochet sound. Oh. So, oh. That one of those happens in the middle of his fucking entrance music now, and it's like, yeah, that doesn't need to be there. It's too, uh, it's too much. Step too far. Step too far, well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Ricochet defeated Cesaro. Best of three. After two straight weeks of show stealers, barn burners, you name it, Ricochet and Cesaro had their rubber match, and it was every bit as thrilling as the previous two bouts. That Ricochet got the win and bragging rights was somewhat overshadowed though, as the ongoing grudge de- uh, dovetailed with the saga of the 24-7 championship in unexpected fashion. You see, our truth had been conspicuous by his absence all night, and a hunting party, led by increasingly disheveled Drake Maverick and a solo cup-toting EC3. EC3 has been carrying that solo cup around a lot lately, like he's just drunk on the job, and it's pretty goddamn funny. If I mean, what else is he doing? Though? Nothing. <laughs> I think he's doing that himself. I think that's his idea to be always holding that solo cup. Oh, man. Um, uh, spent the whole show trying to find him. Truth turned up under everyone's nose, literally. After Ricochet had defeated Cesaro in typically stupefying fashion, the Swiss size of Borg administered a retaliatory beating and went to retrieve a table from underneath the ring, only to reveal Truth hiding on top of it. A stupefied Cesaro. They used stupefied twice there. Did they? They used stupefying fashion and then stupefied Cesaro. Yes. A stupefied Cesaro found himself drop kicked by Ricochet before he could even contemplate making a move for the title. And then the chase began anew with the unusual suspect or with the usual suspects pouring it out of the woodwork to try and pin the elusive champion. Thanks to an assist from Carmella, uh, who super kicked Maverick right when the 205 Live GM had truth to himself. The champion made his latest, <coughs> narrowest escape yet, dashing through the WWE universe. As truth shows, it helps to have someone watching your back, especially when it's every man for himself. Mm. Oh, man. The, so good. The European 24-7 title. He fucking said it again during the... When he on the plane. On the plane. He said the European the champion. The European champion. My roommate was dying oh laughing at that. Oh, my gosh. He's not even a wrestling fan. And he's a European champion. He's like... Isn't it 24-7 champion? I was like, yes! Oh, man. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. It's so good, man. All right. The Undertaker makes one last demand of Goldberg on Raw. The only one to speak of, speak his mind on the first ever bout with Goldberg, The Undertaker, kept things short and sweet. Goldberg, he claimed, 
would be subject to the same kind of otherworldly and fury of a dead man. Otherworldly fury the dead man has unleashed on all his rivals when the reaper comes calling. And their ho- the air would be thick with the souls of, the, of his vanquished foes. Despite all of that, the last outlaw made it very clear that he still expected the unstoppable icon version of Goldberg rather than the benevolent family man of his final WWE run. Anything less would be met with an inhumane amount of brutality. As far as the dead man is concerned, Goldberg is next, but he may rue the day he walked again if the w- former WWE champion gives the legendary superstar exactly what he asked for. Yep, and uh, yeah. That's your raw recap. That was a thing. Um, interesting promos. Uh, I thought the promos were actually really good for the build-up to that, where he, uh, you know, he told Goldberg that Goldberg's next, and as we'll talk about soon, Goldberg said, you know, the rest in peace. Rest in peace. Peace. To Undertaker, so you know, they're using their classic lines on each other. That's, so that's classic booking, classic mm-hmm. writing, so I like that. Yep. Um, but yeah. It's like using their finisher on each other. Exactly, exactly. Which Goldberg also tried to do during the uh, Jetta match. We'll get to that in yeah, a bit. We will. We will. Oh my goodness! You want to start off the SmackDown? Uh, yeah, give me a second to pull it up here. I'm just. Yeah. Well, uh, we can't even blame Facebook now, can we? No. Well, we could. We could if we wanted. You know, probably find I'm some not, indirect I'm way. Above, I'm not above it. No. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler got into a heated war of words. Uh, with his WWE title defense against Dolph Ziggler only three nights away, Kofi Kingston arrived on SmackDown Live intent on making it clear that there was no way he would be succumbing to the uh, show-off at WWE Super Showdown, especially after his homecoming to Ghana last week. Kingston stressed the importance of wanting the people of his home country to realize that anything was possible. Uh, The dreadlock dynamo was quickly interrupted by Ziggler. Ziggler still insisted that Kofi's storybook journey to the WWE Championship at WrestleMania should have been his. But Kingston fired back, saying that the reason his, the journey didn't belong to Ziggler was because the show-off was a quitter. Ziggler ret- uh, retorted by saying that at Super Showdown this Friday, it would no longer be that it should have been him, because it would be him, And when he defeated Kingston for the WWE title. With tensions escalating, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn arrived, ready to rekindle their rivalry with the New Day, as their scheduled tag team uh, match against Kingston and Xavier Woods was next. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods defeat Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Following the unruly circumstances that kicked off SmackDown Live, WWE Champion Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods teamed up to take on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. With animosities running high between the pairs over recent weeks, Kofi and Xavier took right to their rivals without hesitation. In the heat of the action, Woods neutralized KO, allowing Kofi to connect flush with trouble in paradise to Zayn for the major tag team victory. However, Dolph Ziggler immediately blindsided Kofi and Xavier with massive super kicks after the bell, getting an impactful last word before WWE Super Showdown. Boom. That's why he get what happened happened. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Bailey appeared on a moment of bliss as the complexion of the SmackDown women's division changed. Alexa Bliss arrived on SmackDown Live via the wild card rule to host a very special moment of bliss with SmackDown women's champion Bailey. The hugger was almost immediately bombarded by the goddess's claims that Bailey was simply lucky when she cashed in to win the title at Money in the Bank, and that the championship meant much more when Bliss was holding it. Bailey took great exception, going as far as knocking a cup of coffee out of Alexa Bliss's hand. What is with this coffee knocking out of the hand? It's a weird. It's gotta be. Gimmick. It's gotta be Starbucks. So a shot of Starbucks, maybe. I don't know. Like, it's, it's, but it's always just a regular ass cup that she's holding and stuff. It's, it's gotta be something significant. There's gotta strange. be something significant to it. it. Has to be. I think it's because they're trying to sell merch. Maybe. For a cup of bliss. A cup of bliss. Haha. <laughs> yeah. 
Bailey took her. Uh, wait, she yep. did that. Uh, it cut out of existence. Uh, however, just as tensions were rising, Carmella interrupted to claim that she deserved the next crack at Bailey. The situation escalated even further when Charlotte Flair arrived with a major announcement via Shane McMahon. There would be a match to determine Bailey's title challenger at WWE Stomping Grounds, and that match would be Carmella versus Alexa versus Charlotte. And that that match would be tonight. Bam. Oh, man. Chaos ensued during W during R Truth and Elias twenty four seven championship lumberjack match. In response to R Truth ruining Shane McMahon appreciation night last week, the twenty four seven champion was put in a lumberjack match against a superstar he'd lost and regained the title from last week. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Elias. The bout came to us with a special catch. The lumberjacks, which included superstars from Raw SmackDown Live, would not be eligible to pin Truth during the contest. The match was over in mere seconds when Elias caught Truth with a roll-up that secured him the 24-7 championship. However, with the title's rules now back in full effect, the Lumberjacks immediately tried to zone in on the living Truth. Elias almost got out of dodge when Truth caught him on the outside and chased him under the ring with the referee in tow. By the time the two returned to the land of the living, the bell had rung and the official declaring our truth the new 24-7 champion. Truth only had a moment to celebrate, though, as the always persistent Drake Maverick spotted him, and the chase was back on. So, I just want to say this. Uh, I actually missed this part of SmackDown. I didn't see this. Okay. This sounds like the best thing that happened on SmackDown. It was very funny. Because that's genius. The fact that we didn't even see the pinfall, but that a referee, R-Truth, and Elias all disappeared under the ring... And when they came back out, our truth was champion again. No idea how. It's genius. It's so genius. As soon as I saw him pull out, I'm like, okay, he's gonna get pinned. It's uh, god damn it, that's fucking brilliant, man. What a. Uh, as much as I hate the look of the actual belt itself right now, mm. god damn it, do I love some of the stuff they're doing with the 24/7. Is it though? Is it interesting? It's ugly belt. It's an ugly belt. Mm. Edge went so far as to call it the ugliest fucking title the WWE has ever made. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, he is the rated R superstar. Fuck yeah, he is. All right. Okay, so this is me right now. Uh, Shane McMahon, The Revival, and Drew McIntyre jumped Roman Reigns ahead of WWE Super Showdown. Uh, with his match... With his matchup against Roman Reigns at WWE Super Showdown only three nights away, Shane McMahon arrived on SmackDown Live with the Revival right by his side. Still ecstatic over leading a savage beatdown of Reigns the night before on Raw, Shane O'Mac then began to look ahead to their clash this Friday in Jeddah. Shane claimed that his attack of Reigns was very similar to the training of a dog, the big dog in this instance. Shane claimed that he would neuter Roman at WWE Super Showdown, a claim Reigns would not take kindly and would prompt his arrival. The Revival attempted to cut Reigns off at the pass, but Roman would drop both of them with Superman punches. It now appeared that Roman had a clear path to getting his hands on Shane a few nights early, but Drew McIntyre would show up out of nowhere, dropping Reigns in his tracks with a Claymore kick that rocked the big dog. McIntyre then dragged the clearly dazed Roman into the ring where Shane would proceed to connect with a second spear to the big dog in his many nights. Was this a sign of what was to come when the two collide on Friday? That one's actually one where WWE math failed us. Well, yeah, it's not infallible. It's not. But, wow, I just got some news that I can't even share right now. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so you want to take the next one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alexa Bliss defeated Carmella and Charlotte Flair in a triple threat match to earn the opportunity to challenge Bayley for SmackDown Women's Championship at WWE Stomping Grounds. After crossing paths on a moment of bliss earlier in the evening, Carmella, Alexa Bliss, and Charlotte Flair collided in a triple threat match to determine Bayley's challenger for the SmackDown Women's Championship at Stomping Grounds. The action was intense, with all three superstars wanting to, uh, wanting to stake their claim to the next SmackDown Women's title opportunity. It appeared that Princess Bella may be en route to the victory, especially when she was able to break up two pin attempts that seemed like they would have clinched victory for both Flair and Bliss. Princess Bella then connected with a flush super kick to the Queen. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, who had arrived earlier in the contest, 
took advantage of the no disqualification rules of a triple threat match and tripped up Carmella, causing her to drop to the mat. The goddess had no issue taking advantage, smashing the princess of Staten Island into the mat with the DDT that secured her the victory and a title fight with Bailey. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's out there. It's I, don't, there. I don't know why. I, I, I'm very confused with how start and stop the clearances of Alexa are, where she's cleared to wrestle. She's not cleared to wrestle. She's yeah. Not cleared to wrestle. She's not cleared to wrestle. She's cleared to wrestle. She's not cleared to wrestle. It seems like that's been happening a lot over the last year. Why so a bit, yeah. It's very strange. Um, I can't remember any other wrestlers who've had something quite that start and stop before mm-hmm. it's repeated Shawn Michaels I mean that was self-imposed he lost his smile he just didn't want to lose the title mm. um, but <laughs> uh, you know I would yeah I, I couldn't say he was starting to stop because he was so prolific over the time I mean he was Mr. Wrestlemania for a reason right this is true Oh, Lars Sullivan delivered an unsettling interview exclusively on SmackDown Live. That's not what the title is, but guess what? I freestyle, too. So, you know, words, I put them in places. Oh. They need to not put a mic in this man's face. He has a terrible lisp. Really bad. It's hard to be intimidated by someone with a pitch voice and a lisp. Oh, not intimidating. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can have a weird voice and be intimidating. Like, I was talking to you and, uh, to you and Dubs about... Uh, Cool Hand Luke earlier. The bad guy in that, the Gordon Cap. Yeah. He is got a strange voice. Wh- what we've got here is failure to communicate. But he pulls that off because of his presence and everything. Lars makes these goofy faces, talks with a lisp, and we all know that we don't like him as a person. There's nothing wrong with speaking as a list. I don't want anybody no, to think fine. that I have a problem yeah. with that. It's just... Well, you're not intimidating me on the mic if you're using it the way Lars does. Yeah, no. You know who talked weird was, but was an amazing, scary villain? Sid Vicious. Javier, yeah. Javier Bardem in Skyfall. Okay. The Bond movie. Okay. He pulls his fucking jaw out of his mouth and everything, but he talks very, very upbeat and polite and with the... Generic Latin accent. I've never seen that movie, but I might have to watch it now. Skyfall's one of the best movies ever made. Okay. Well, in his first ever exclusive interview, Lars Sullivan arrived on SmackDown Live with a lot in his mind. It was part of it. <laughs> All of it unsettling. <laughs> Being interviewed by Caleb Braxton, the freak described how he got moniker and how it drives him to show everyone that his world is full of darkness and pain. A forbidding message for the Lucha House Party who will square off against Sullivan in a 3-on-1 handicap match on WWE Super Showdown. With Braxton clearly uncomfortable, Lars began to recite a nursery rhyme, Three Blind Mice, ending it by saying that they would be ripped apart, clearly this symbolism for this clash in this Friday in Jeddah. He said that he would rip their tails to pieces. Mm-hmm. That's not scary. You're just stupid. Lars yeah. is a goon. Not in the good way that he should be. I felt sorry for Kayla having to stand there next to him. I was like, oh, you poor girl. You're so pretty. Why you gotta stand next to that freak? Mm-mm. Uh, poor Kayla. Rest in peace, Kayla. She's, She's still alive. Yeah, but she had to stand next to him. That can't be good for her. <laughs> something inside her died sitting there. I'll tell you that right now. So, uh, oh, man. Peace to whatever part of Kayla we know about. Oh, man. <laughs> If there was ever a wonder at who was playing good broadcaster, bad broadcaster. <laughs> I was just about to say that. I swear. Oh, man. I guess I'm Byron Saxton. Oh, man. Hey, well, they, they got rid of Booker. The Booker. King Booker. King Booker. That was hilarious. That, was, that, that made me happy when Jacoby remembered King Booker. Yeah. like, oh, okay. You know what's up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Andrade. Uh, Andrade. I almost say Andrade every time because in Brazilian it's a last name and it's Andrade. Uh, okay. Andrade made a statement before challenging Finn Balor at WWE Super Showdown. Before Andrade and Apollo Crews scheduled match could kick off, Andrade ambushed Crews, seemingly willing to, seemingly wanting 
to send a message to Finn Balor before their Intercontinental Championship match at Super Showdown. However, Andrade would get more than he bargained for when the extraordinary man bolted out to come to Apollo's aid, prompting Andrade to briefly flee. Finn would let his guard down for just a moment, though, allowing Andrade to drop the Intercontinental Champion. Andrade would get the upper hand tonight, but how will he fare against the Demon on Friday? Spoilers, it was the Demon, so you know who wins. You see it? You saw it? Excitement. <laughs> Goldberg and the Undertaker come face to face ahead of WWE Super Showdown. Goldberg made his first ever appearance on SmackDown Live as he prepared for his clash with the Undertaker this Friday at WWE Super Showdown. This past Friday, the WWE Hall of Famer did not back down after the dead man shitting words last night on Raw, telling the Phenom that. Although he respected him, The Undertaker would still be next this Friday. But the gong hit tonight. Yes, The Undertaker arrived on SmackDown Live, suddenly appearing in the ring and coming face-to-face with Goldberg. The two just stared each other down just days before their dream match in Jeddah. But then, just as quickly as the dead man appeared, he was gone. Goldberg vamped the microphone once more, saying that Undertaker would be getting the full Goldberg experience this Friday. And that the best that he best be ready. One thing's for sure, we all are. Tilly. 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 Wake, wake, wake up, bro. We, we still. I just, I'm, I had this awful dream. Like, I'm starting to we feel boring. I'm starting to feel boring. Undertaker in 2019. I, I thought, like, oh, that's what it was. Um, yeah, no, that's definitely what it was. We had Goldberg <laughs> versus oh, that the Undertaker. Real? That, that happened. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that happened. <laughs> I don't want to talk about these dudes the way I'm about to talk Bro, about Bro, I don't. And honestly, they are God. legends in their time, in I their love prime. Both of them. Legends Fuck. in their time, icons of the, in their prime. Yeah. Or legends in their prime, yeah. icons of the times, yes. Unfortunately, this business does not go hand in hand with longevity sometimes. It ages you. It certainly fucking does. You know what else ages you? Age. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of years of age. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh lord. Oh lordy lordy lordy. Let me pull up this goddamn Super Showdown recap. Oh man. It's not even on the WWE app. It's 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 under shows. Shows. Raw, SmackDown Live, Superstars, events. Nah, bro. Oh, it is on the site. On the site. Um, That's a fail. That your app fail. doesn't show the same things that your site does, WWE. That is a fail. That's, that's a little bit of a fail still. Well, they don't have a very... Did you see how awkward Brock Lesnar looked on the picture when he was holding his money in the blank thing? Let's just talk about all the stuff that we saw. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the card on uh, Super Showdown Wikipedia here. We have... Alright. So, the matches that we had for us were... Because we... we, we we are on a, uh, a little bit of an abbreviated thing here, especially with so much goddamn things going on in the world of wrestling, yeah. but also outside the world of wrestling, so we got some stuff to talk about. Uh, the results, come on, results, there they are. Okay, so, uh, first match that we had was the Usos versus the Revival, top guys. Um, Revival lost... Oh! Usos I'm okay with that. I love the Usos. As long as they're not losing to fucking Ryder and Hawkins still. <laughs> oh, man. You're Ryder. still on that, bro? Yes. That, was, that was like six weeks ago. <laughs> that is forever. They chopped them out oh, three man. weeks in a row to fucking roll-ups from the oh, worst man. team in the world. Oh, man. That's just terrible. Awful. Terrible. The fucking Zack Ryder. All right. Um... <laughs> Universal Championship match. Seth Rollins, the champion, defeats Baron Corbin. Yeah. And then Rollins stops Lesnar in his tracks before cash and attempt. So, can let's let's talk about this. Sure. Baron Corbin won Money in the Bank last year, right? Failed the cash he in. Failed miserably at cashing in, to the point where I thought it was the worst cash in attempt of all time. Now, granted, granted, Brock didn't cash in this time. But he attempted to try to cash in. Yes. 
and it was brutal. Paul Heyman clumsily falling through the ropes, dropping it. That's enough to distract Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, while he's getting his ass beaten with a chair and getting his dick kicked into his stomach, fucking mm-hmm. problems, <laughs> causing a second bout of diverticulitis. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Brock is so worried about the money in the bank briefcase that he grabs it to try to protect it. Rollins can't do anything with it, Brock. You're the only person who's allowed to do anything with the briefcase. We learned last year that you're really, if just because someone grabs it doesn't mean they're now the money in the bank holder. So you have no worries on grabbing it right then and there. It's standing there. How about you just defend yourself, you giant fuck? It's <laughs> true though Then Heyman is sitting outside of the ring Which I love Heyman Heyman's the best Heyman's, Heyman's the Screaming his head off at Brock No Brock Brock no Love that Love, yeah. love Paul for that his, his, Gets his you into it He gets you into it But yeah. Jesus Christ man The Corbin match was awful It was not very good Mm-mm. Neither of them did their best work And then Brock came out And did even less work Oh wow And then uh, in the words of uh, of uh, my my boy Chucky Taylor from the independent scene from AEW, mm-hmm. did you see Rollins that fat piece of shit trying to cover up with that DDP belly tape? <laughs> oh man! It was hilarious. He had the uh, full on DDP belly tape. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, DDT uh, was notorious for that. It was hilarious. So like, uh. I mean, I understand it. He got his ass beat with that chair last week, but it was it was just. Everything together came together in a yep. way that was very odd to me and didn't translate into anything amazing. Okay. Um, it was so strange. Uh, after that, we had Finn Balor versus Andrade. This is where I had actually originally turned on live. I was a little bit late, and this was the match that was on. Okay. Um, Jesus Christ, the heat. This well. is this is where I noticed the heat. This is where I messaged yeah. Locke, and I told him, even the fucking referee is sweating. Yep. <laughs> Like, there's a problem with this entire idea. Climate is just ridiculous. It's not set up for it there. They don't have the air conditioning level to a point where people can work comfortably. And it was obvious in every single match. Every single match last night was sloppy. Yeah. Even, even Kofi. When's the last time you've seen Kofi fuck up a Trouble in Paradise? Never. Last night, he didn't even touch... Like, it, when they showed the replay... He was, he literally just spun over Dolph, and Dolph just fell. It was like... Oh, no. It was poorly planned, it was, the the camera angle was bad, and on top of that, it was the first time ever Kofi Kingston has done a sloppy Trouble in Paradise. Mm-mm. All the zigzag attempts were sloppy. It was just, both of those guys can work, man. Yeah, they can. I, I even said that might be match of the night in our lead up to it because yeah. they're both such workers. Yeah, yeah, but like, again, you can't work against Mother Nature. You can't. All right, Shane McMahon defeated Roman Reigns in a controversial fashion with the help of uh, Drew. Drew McIntyre and his Claymore. <laughs> that that is a devastating kick, though. You, you put is. your whole oh, body I into love that. Love the Claymore. Like his his I entrance. Love the Claymore, but again. Really? It was too. It, 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 it didn't. It, there was. It always looks like it connects. Always. It always looks brutal. This time he was off by a bit. Like everyone was just off. Oh man. That it's and it's a combination of things. You know what I just thought of it. It's not just heat. Mm-hmm. It's jet lag. Yeah. They were in. They were in Fort Worth, Texas on fucking Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And now they're in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, Friday fucking morning. Yeah, I can see why that might be a little bit of an exhaustion factor. Like, where it was Friday morning for us? Yeah. It was Friday night for them, and they were performing again. And then flying right back to the United States. Oh. They lost the whole day. Just in travel. Wow. Like, that's why I can't blame any of the wrestlers, man. Everyone was a little sloppy. Yeah. Everyone was sloppy, because, like, how the, that's a, that is a fucking insane set of conditions to work under, man. It is. But, I mean, you know what? I'll tell you one thing. I was surprised by that finish. I was surprised that they jobbed Roman Reigns out at the pay-per-view. That was something. I didn't see that happening. But, like, like you know, who was it? Cole, Michael Cole said he has no business losing. 
Like, no. Like, it's weird. He has no business losing to Shane McMahon. None. And he, he jobbed to him on a pay-per-view, and not even in the way that they had set up Shane beating him four days earlier. Mm-hmm. So the storytelling is just off base there. Mm-hmm. They just did not have a goddamn plan as to what they were doing. Uh, and then that led into another one where I had to question the logic of the match. Lars Sullivan versus Lucha House Party in a ha- three-on-one handicap match. Now, if you have a three-on-one handicap match and it's tag in, tag out against Lars Sullivan and you're all fucking 205 Live guys, yeah. you've just made it a one-on-one match with Lars Sullivan. So any, you know sort of leveling of the playing field that putting them in that match by not making it a tornado handicap yeah. they ruin any drama because it's like well obviously they're not going to win and the way they didn't win sure they, they came out looking strong Very. but they got disqualified within three seconds of all three of them being in the ring when yeah. does that happen that quickly you, not you really to give them five counts try to get the guys out of the ring but they always let tag teams attack one person in the ring yeah, that's true. I'm, it, it was all very confused, man. Okay. Referee was having a heat stroke. Probably. Then we got Randy Orton defeated Triple H. Yeah, that was what a, a hell of an RKO. What a beautiful RKO that was. Beautiful RKO. Just, he hit hard. He just, that, the slap on that RKO, like sn- when it hit the ground. The yeah, snap the snap. Yeah. Oh, my Ooh, gosh. That was lovely. That was oh very, very, that was the best RKO I've seen in, like, since Six the months. since the SummerSlam dish yeah. where he popped up Seth Rollins, oh, that, that was, was Mania. Mania, that Mania, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the, I mean, that's the best one of all time. Yeah. But then there was also what was it? Uh, um, Mustafa Ali went for like the shooting star press and yeah. got caught in midair. Yeah. The shooting star press for an RKO like yeah. six months ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was metal. Yeah. He caught him mid shooting star press. Yeah, that's pretty ill awesome. stuff. That's so sick. Oh, man. Uh, but good match. Triple H did his motorcycle entrance. Randy did the Viper stuff. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Braun Strowman defeated Bobby Lashley. Uh, WWE math dictated that that would happen because Bobby okay. stood tall on that arm wrestling match. Yep. Yeah. Um, w- w- WWE Championship yeah. match. Kofi Kingston defeats Dolph Ziggler. Again, good match, but sloppier than it should have been and not as good as it could have been. Well, you know when we get the real good match of those two is now in the cage at Battleground. Yep. That will be a good match because they won't be so fucking tired or hot. Exactly. And then this 50 51 man Battle Royal Who was the 51st? Who added themselves? I don't know. It's a 50 in here. Oh. Maybe it's just a typo on Wikipedia but they say 51. Hmm. Um, Mansoor won by last eliminating Elias. So Mansoor, if anybody remembers or was watching the Saudi show last year, Mansoor was one of the three Saudi guys that they signed and that they brought out to just cut those little promos in the ring to the Okay, Saudi yeah, guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mansoor was the one with the long hair that actually had pretty good mic skills. Okay. He made his debut on NXT few weeks ago, I guess. Okay. Not a huge deal. He's okay. He's, he's good. But once they said he was in the Battle Royal, I was like, well, there's the winner. It's over. Because mm. obviously they're making the hometown boy go over in, yeah. in Saudi Arabia. Saudi, yeah. So, and made made him go after Elias, a big deal. So I was like, yeah. So, so for sure. Uh, but then finally... What was the last match The Undertaker defeats Goldberg. Boo! Oh my gosh. I, like, this one, I have to speak on. Like, these are two of my favorite superstars, you know what I mean, where it comes Ever. to, Ever. like, all time. Okay. All time. Okay. Like, you know what I mean, that up there with... The, I watched the whole Undefeated Streak from, like, the, the war, the, the war, the Monday Night Wars, you know what I mean? I saw all of that. So, to when I first heard this was going to be a match, I was like, What? It's and then, 2019, how are we so lucky? Exactly, and then Tilly broke it down. I didn't want to believe him, but I'd be damned if he wasn't right. Neither of them can carry a full match, man. That was, like, that they was... Both, they are both at stages of their career where they need to be carried. 
through matches by somebody who's very, very skilled and young and vibrant. The problem is, neither of them are that. Mm -hmm. So who's doing the carrying? They're trying to carry each other, and they should have been and at they least... they failed at carrying each other several times, literally, <laughs> with that horrible Jill Hammer as fucking the block. <laughs> <laughs> Which fucking... Holy shit, was that genius. Like, it wasn't even a... It wasn't even a suplex. It was just... He just picked awful. him up. As he was picking yeah, up, he was falling. On his neck. Yeah. And then you saw them say, Are you okay? He's yep. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like... Goldberg fucking again bloodied himself on the fucking training room door on the way out on to the ring. On his own. He did it to himself. himself. Then, does the, what I assume was an intentional missed spear, because Taker walk, moved out of the way. I, I don't think he would do that if, unless it was planned. But he then goes through the middle ropes, and instead of letting his chest get stopped by the turnbuckle, he goes all the way through and hits his head on the fucking post and busts himself open wide. Wide and he was gushing. He was gushing. It was disgusting. Oh man. It was awful. Everything about it was bad. It, the, even the look on Undertaker's face after the win looked disappointed. Mm -mm. And Goldberg apologized for the match on Twitter. Goldberg went on Twitter and said, "I wanted to go out there and do up, but I let I let you guys down." Mm -hmm. And like, it's just. <sighs> I'm sorry, Goldberg. I'm sorry, Undertaker. I love you guys, but. I just, it might be too late. Like, it might be over for you two. Uh, yeah. I just... I don't want to see that again. I don't want to see... I can't. It's sad, I can't. It's, it was the first time it's ever. Sad. It's probably going to be the last. They probably knew it was going to be... It's got to be... Thought Undertaker, I thought Undertaker was going to go into business for himself at the end of it and take his gloves off and legit retire right there and just be like, fuck this. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, it's just... A, like I said, I... It's sad. I don't like it to be so, but that seems to be the, the, the space where they're both at right now, which is the end of those careers. Mm. We've got enough talent, man. We've got enough young guys who can be out there killing it. You know, if some, if New Japan or AEW or something wants to find somebody for Goldberg to wrestle or something that can carry him, I'm down for that. If they want to do the same thing with Taker and it's somebody who can carry him, I'm down for that. I don't need to see those. I don't need to see two people of that current caliber that were of such so much higher caliber back in the day. I don't need to see them go at each other and fucking kitten paw at each other's faces. Oh for man, ten minutes. kitten paw. He said, "Oh wow." It was just sad, man. It was a sad, sad match. Sad way to end the night. I literally left, I turned it off, went and had a smoke, smoked a fat bowl, and went right to bed. Just oh, sad. man. Oh, man. It, it was brutal. So that was that for the Raw that, WWE, WWE recap. Stuff. Yeah, that's all the WWE stuff. We got, uh, I think in two weeks, we got Battlegrounds. Yeah. Uh, we'll get the full card Stomping Grounds? Stomping Grounds, you're right. Stomping Grounds. Battlegrounds, okay. battlegrounds is a different one. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean... AEW sort of quiet right now still we're waiting on the TV deal to start up with the weekly show um, there was a thing called Fighter Fest coming up um, this Sunday tomorrow is New Japan Dominion from Osaka Joe Hall in Osaka Japan which is the one that's being headlined by Kazuchika Okada versus Chris Jericho for the IWGP heavyweight title so that's very interesting um, and uh, beyond that, oh, um, John Moxley had a match against Juice Robinson uh, recently, and uh, that was a pretty good match. You can find that online. I saw that he re he captured a title. Moxley? Yeah. Not that I've seen yet. But I'm not. Maybe. I'm not. Sure. It was recently. I saw him maybe. holding a title up. It was like the IWGB. Oh, he might have attacked. I think Juice might have been is a champion and I think he might have been holding it over him because he's saying he's going to take it from him. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, but yeah I mean that's all happening apparently uh, the only backstage thing I have for AEW right now is apparently there is still some sort of non-agreement happening between them and Neville aka Pac mm. on the indies um, from the sounds of it sounds like WWE might have been in the right 
with uh, with the whole Neville thing. Neville seems to be a little bit of a, a baby when it comes to doing business. Mm. He might uh, have a little bit of that Hulk Hogan syndrome of, uh, no, 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 I win. Mm. Itis. <laughs> well, we have this match for you. No, 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 I win. Like, no, no, I win. I think you're misunderstanding. I win. Uh, but then, yeah, so tonight uh, is... There's a couple things going on tonight. It's a big night for combat sports. Uh, yeah. Boxing, Triple G is fighting on the zone. He's fighting a pretty unknown Canadian guy, so he's probably going to whoop his ass because Triple G is a goddamn savage. Um, okay. That's a Gennady Golovkin for anybody who's not familiar with the boxing world. Um, but then the other one, the big one for me tonight, is UFC 238. Um, we've got my girl, Angela Hill, who I... Uh, amazing. She's a great fighter. Uh, she was on The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, okay. She won her last fight on real short notice and kicked the girl's ass. That was just a month ago. She took another short notice fight and is fighting tomorrow. She's fighting Yan Zeonan, who's a Chinese uh, fighter who's a uh, savage as well. So that'll be a good fight. Hopefully my girl Angie wins and then me and her can go play some Apex Legends again after it. Okay. Um, we've got a... Uh, let's see... Uh, Caitlin Chukagian versus Joanne Calderwood. Joanne Calderwood's another savage. She's a British girl. Uh, we got Tatiana Suarez versus Nina Ansaroff. Nina Ansaroff is the fiance of uh, Amanda Nunes, the current double champ. Okay. She, Amanda Nunes knocked out both Cyborg, like Chris Cyborg, the undefeated crazy chick. Okay. And Ronda Rousey. Uh, both of them she beat in the first round in under 50 seconds. Mm-mm. So she is a killer. Uh, nice. her, so her her uh, fiance is fighting Tatiana Suarez in the strawweight division. Uh, Aljo Sterling, shout out to Aljo, love you, buddy. Is fighting Pedro Munoz. That's going to be a good fight at bantamweight. That's going to decide the number one contender for the main event. Uh, and on the main card, we have uh, Tai Tuivasa, the badass from Australia. That okay. motherfucker is a savage. Okay. He's fighting Blagoy Ivanov in the heavyweight division. Ty is 8-1-0. and Blagoy is 17-2-0. and So that's a good fight. Yeah. Uh, we got Jimmy Rivera ver- uh, versus Peter Yan in bantamweight again. That's probably going to determine number two contender. Lightweight, we have Donald Cowboy Cerrone coming up against the returning Tony Ferguson. They're fighting at 155 lightweight. Uh, that will probably determine who faces the winner of Khabib Nurmagomedov and Dustin Poirier, which was just confirmed to be happening in September. I believe it's September 6th in Dubai. Uh, So that's going to be very interesting. Uh, Co-main event is a title match. Women's flyweight title. Valentina Shevchenko versus Jessica Evil Eye. Uh, That'll be a good fight. Uh, Shevchenko will probably win because she is fucking savage as well. Uh, And then the main event... We have Marlon Magic Moraes, uh, and he is fighting Henry Cejudo, uh, who is the current strawweight champion, or no, not strawweight, flyweight champion, men's flyweight champion at 150, uh, 125. He is moving up a weight class to 135 to fight for TJ Dillashaw's vacated uh, bantamweight title. If Henry wins, he is a double champ in both divisions. Uh, if Marlon wins, it'll be his first UFC win uh, in his, I want to say, seven-year UFC career so far. Okay. Um, Magic Marlon is a bad motherfucker. He totally has first-round knockout power. He knocked out Aljo Ster- Sterling in 14 seconds with a knee to the face. Okay. Uh, uh, knee to face. Yes, knee to face. <laughs> uh, Henry Cejudo is also a bad motherfucker. Obviously, he's the flyweight champion in UFC, 125 pounds. He beat Demetrius Johnson, the one of the best pound-for-pound pound, pound pound fighters of all time. Uh, he also won a gold medal in the Olympics uh, the same year that Daniel Cormier uh, was in the Olympics. Okay. Uh, I think it's 2006, I want to say. Uh, he won gold in his division that year, so he's a gold medalist. He's the first ever gold medalist UFC champion and now potentially gold medalist UFC double champion. Uh, so that's a very interesting fight that's well. happening tonight as well. Uh, that is coming from the United Center, so Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Um, and that's starting at 8 o'clock tonight for the prelims. Uh, early prelims are probably at 7. 
Uh, main event or main main card starts at ten as usual. Uh, rest in peace to the Reddit subreddit our MMA streams. They got uh, shut the fuck down. Oh wow. Uh, but tip tip, they still find a way. Hint hint, changing one letter. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> or like a, a sick acronym. Yeah, like, like a, well, the the, the oh, S um, at the end turns into a Z sometimes, and mm. that is sometimes very, very helpful. A wink, a wink. Mm. Um, or watch wrestling. Dog. But those are uh, that's that's basically all the uh, punching motherfuckers in the face news that I got. <laughs> yeah, well, sort of doing it ourselves and creating news. That's all we got. Well, <laughs> Conor McGregor's fighting next week against. <laughs> give me the belt. Give me the belt. <laughs> I went to belts. What was it? Uh, did you see that one where he was punching people all over the world for like their belts and shit? Oh, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Fighting around the world. Yeah. 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 Fighting around the world. Hey, Tugger. We can't say most of the stuff he says in that episode. No, we can't. We he can't. comes off a little racist in those jokes. Yeah. Well, you know. Oh my gosh, I was at the show the other day, and this guy thought he was funny, but he was really. Just, like, he was making, like, he, I swear it was racist. It was the most racist content I've heard <laughs> in years. And I've heard jokes about race yeah. that are funny. But, yeah. like, you know, there's just some... Patrice O'Neal, baby. He told a lot of them. There's just some things that just, you know what I mean, cross the line with me. I, I, I just, and, you know, I had to just be diplomatic about it. But, like, it's irking me to this day. <laughs> irking me to this day. So, I, I just, yeah. just got to move yeah. forward, though. I feel you. Yeah. Leave those people to the side. You gotta be the like. It's not hard to be the bigger man, figuratively yeah. or literally, but figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> figuratively, I'm having my challenges. Yeah. But this has been another episode of uh, Tough, Tough Talks, Talks with Tilly in the Block. Woo. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week where we have more for you. Bless up, Block and Tilly out. Chum gang. Expose the north. Baby. Yeah. <laughs>